Tokyo and just moving to another city. And today is the third day of school. So if you're on your way, uh, you can be at school, you can be in a hurry, and actually on the way, you meet your, your poor teacher. You recognize you, thanks to the uniform, that is you're new student, and say, okay, you need to hurry now, because you're going to be late. So, zero resistances. Um, so, and on your way, you actually you've met one of your classmates, which you also to the student, say, hey, you want to go to school with me? Go together. So why not? Um, somehow you get lost, and finally you find what it seems to be your, your school. So it's written to the wall that it's your school, and you don't really understand because obviously it looks like a castle. But you still go. And when you're going, actually it's even weirder. So there are soldiers in armor. Uh, in the sexualization of female body, you realize that the other students are actually being tortured, like literally tortured by the teacher, like also the female students are harassed. So your school is definitely not normal. And your teacher, that you met before, it looks actually like this guy now. So he's like a half naked king. Very weird and also kind of creepy. So you, so the teacher said you don't belong here, you don't belong to school. Um, Swear you into a cell. At some moment, he even said that he's gonna kill you, he's threatened your life, and obviously there is something wrong. So uh, after swearing into a cell, what do you do? Okay, what do you do? Run away. Run away. Fight back. What happened to you? Run the place. <laughs> so you basically have two choices. Either you stay passive and you face the consequences. Right now, basically, you die. And you rebel and follow your conviction, saying that you need to fight back. You need to do something. So let's see. How the character and persona is going to be. So, just a bit of disclaimer, it's going to be a bit gore, but uh, it should be fun. So, it's your future, and that's you. <coughs> Here, something happens, obviously. <coughs> of the character personality. Their mask and each character wears it in the face of Archer. So actually the concept of persona is inspired by the Swiss psychiatrist uh, Carl Jung, you may have heard about it. 
Opium. Um, it's really used in the game to show that it's part of the personality we show to other people. So you may have felt sometimes that in your life you wear a mask, it's not that you, that it's part of your personality you're showing to society. Well, the concept is actually used in the game to, to make it uh, like a real thing that people should not say. So, and the other part of the personality of the shadow is the worst part of the person. So, and the game uses this concept a lot to send a powerful message as well. So, that's how kind of <laughs> So, persona, your shadow. So, as I say, personality well, it comes from the heart. Um, those feelings, when they are tamed, um, actually control, can create the persona. But when they are not in the persona five theory, um, can become a shadow and create a world in a parallel universe. That's actually what happened in the game, as I mentioned, with the castle. The teacher has very dark and frustrating frustration feelings, so it actually creates a castle where it thinks it's a king. So, and actually in the game, the only way to stop the distorted desire of frustration, the bad feelings of a person, is to steal the hurt, metaphorically speaking, uh, of the person in this alternative world. It provokes you know, the character a change of mindset in, uh, in real life. We come back to the teacher, we have the teacher in the life, so basically he's a very bad person. In the parallel world, he's a king, because he thinks he's a king of the school, of the castle, and when there is a change of birth, he actually admits that he was a terrible person and he did something very bad. Um, just for the disclaimer, what he did is obviously harassing his students, beating them, and even so, it's a bit dark, but welcome to the person I thought of anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go back to reality and talk a bit about Persona 5. So, Persona 5 is actually a very, very good game. So, it was developed in, uh, released in 2017 by Atlas. If you're not familiar with the studio, it's actually a subsidiary of Sega. Very other of Sega. Um, Game, which is actually quite niche, got super good performances, like uh, we saw 2 million people worldwide. Um, so the game was so big in Japan and then worldwide uh, that there is no manga and anime, also available on Hulu, if you want to check. Uh, the hero of the main character is a playable in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and it's also the favorite brand in Japan. So it's even before uh, Zelda, before Final Fantasy, so it's really something. And if we analyze a bit also the notes from the game, we get a very good critique. So in video game industry, when there's a new game, there are several critics. And the meta score is the evaluation of everything. Um, the game was really approved by everyone. Um, it even got like the best uh, RPG game of the year in 2017. So, I know some of you will probably play the game. The other I have at the end of this presentation, you're going to try it. <laughs> so, um, the game decided to take place in the modern Japan, and they really decided to uh, be inspired to the real Japan, the, the real Tokyo. And also, at the beginning of the game, they even say, like, a movie and series, that the game is not a real game, just to say we're going to be. But it looks like reality, but we're not. It's actually interesting that they do that. So, as you can see, it's a map, the metro. So, we have the metro in person I have, and the real one, it's quite close. Obviously, this one is very simplified, as the metro in Tokyo is a bit like a giant web. Very cool. Uh, it's for Shibuya, we have the person I have, and then reality, again. It's Right, so I'll sneak. Um, Shinjuku, for those who have been to Japan, and would be nice, that's very good. Asakusa, the temple. Um, so, 
a bunch of new society. So today it's gonna mention a lot of problem about Japanese society. Some people can mention some of them. Do you know about the design in Japan, in Japanese society? It's I don't know if it's a problem now, but that's Yeah, there's a problem with suicide, very anyway. Yeah, sexism, that's also a problem we're going to talk about. Sexuality. Yes, in general. War culture. Yes, too. Not enough young people. Perfect. So, Japan has a lot. Oh, yeah. Isolation? Yes. Uh, so, first enough, I'm actually going to talk about a lot of this game. Harassment, sexism, prostitution, peer pressure, corruption, mafia. So, as I mentioned, it's right in the dark. Okay. <coughs> it's not a big game. Uh, so, I'm going to focus on three main problems in Japanese society, but they are way up. Way up. So, sexual harassment and sexism. So, in the game, in the game, two students are harassed by their teacher. The teacher is the last very big. So, the first one is given raped by the teacher and then tried to commit to commit suicide. The second one is blackmailed, also the friend, and she's in a very desperate situation. Uh, people at the school see the prostitute, so she's in, in a real despair. And in real life, we have this guy who is actually the teacher in the Kyushu University and really harassed and raped some of their students. So it's really inspired from the real teacher and today in jail as well. And so it's really a problem uh, in the whole culture. So um, the teacher didn't exactly meet his students because not a lot of students decided to talk about it, but there are huge suspicions on him. And you may also have heard in, uh, the news of Shiri Ito. Uh, someone know who she is? Okay, so Shiri Ito was a journalist, well, he is a journalist, and she got raped and harassed by one of the colleagues from the Prime Minister of Japan. And when she tried to speak about it, to go to the police, well, first, nobody uh, decided that she was saying the truth. Uh, then they asked her as a victim if she could like, monetize what happened to her, which is quite traumatizing. And then she got death threats. Um, people decided back from her. Um, today she's living in the United Kingdom because she's not safe in Japan anymore. She's also the woman who made it into the press by saying that actually the law in Japan uh, basically just don't exist about rape and sexual harassment. So it's really like a society problem and the Japanese society is extremely uh, not fair for women, um, even in the, in the rate. Um, so, Japan, uh, Japan has the lowest position in the, one of the lowest positions in the world gender equality. So, Japan is 114 and 14, on 144. So, it's actually very low, especially for a mother. So, and also, uh, the study shows that one on 13 women go to uh, in Japan today when there are only 1,400 complaints filed as police. So the difference between the two is actually huge. It means that there is a huge problem in society. Also, another problem uh, mentioned in the game is uh, the ikikomori. Do you know how can I keep my Yeah. Like the mass eaters or whatever? Like, no, those are the shut They're the shut right? Like, they come like, 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 all the time. They go back to work in other spaces or whatever. Um, yeah, and just like, I don't know, playing video games, do other things, just inside and everything else. Yes. 
And in the game, we have one of the main characters, uh, so she goes uh, by society, and she, so she's so scared of society that she decided to take a side path and lives just in a room. So this room is completely full of mess, uh, she only lives with like, wheels, nothing, because she's so afraid of living the only safe space she knows her room. So it's actually very interesting that one game is showing this kind of problem. So, and if you marry a movie defined as people have decided to take the same path, there is no real translation, and it was developed by a Japanese today. That's all it takes. And in real life, it's actually really It's like that. Um, Studies show that there is approximately uh, 2 million people who grow on society to just leave uh, the room. It's usually the parents' room. And as Japanese society, we have very long, uh, well, we don't want to talk about their problem aloud. Most of the time, family don't even talk about the fact that one of their children is just living in the room. They don't seek help. So most of them need, obviously, uh, help from doctors. And so the point very important for the government to have a like, real number, it's, it's really something. Um, so 70% of the economy are men, so we feel like um, being society is for them there. There's too much pressure, it's too complicated to resolve. And also, half of them are around their 30s. So it's really something big and necessary. You really feel they cannot be uh, part of society. Is this something only ha happening in Japan? The peak of the world? No, it uh, also exists in the US, uh, in Europe, but it's really very bad big in Japan. Because I think because of the pressure from society, it's way bigger in Japan, it's all the way to tradition, the workplace, the family, uh, that's what we have in the US and Europe. <laughs> yeah. So, I, well, my question relates also to the previous slide. Yeah. And so these problems in general are kind of unique to mental society. And in what context these things are appearing? Yeah. For instance, that we just mentioned two characters that are basic. So how? So and I, when I play the game, I'm alone in the room. I'm playing this game, and I, I'm subject to this. How do I experience this? In, in what context, actually, right? So, these characters disappear in the game, or and, and we see that they, they just pass by, or we interact with them? No, we actually interact with them. Because first, when the character uh, meets them at school, we understand that there is something wrong, that they don't feel safe, they don't want to talk about the future, and then we kind of trying to see how they can help. And so when one of the students of her skill actually commits suicide, which is also very interesting and symptomatic of the Japanese society, is everyone is saying, oh, it's just her, it's not a problem that I've been caused. And then the students, the, male, the protagonists, decide, no, there is actually a problem with the teacher, we need to find a solution. And so that's why they decide to use the personage, to help her. Like that, um, so I would really like if you could uh, explain the art of interaction that you just did for the other slides. Okay. Uh, so you want me to go back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So with this character, uh, so she's actually a very good hacker. Um, she's a hacker. Um, She's actually linked, uh, she's a relative of the Lone Wolf's character. And you kind of understand he has like, a daughter, she's not. And then he wants to, uh, to talk to her, 
and she's not responsible at all. And then you try to understand why and why is it similar and how we can help her to actually get off of her work. So somehow it's going to help because uh, I don't want to spoil the game too. Uh, uh, so it's going to help her to little by little go on her own, creating a safe place and actually making her understand how the society, yes, can be very difficult, but she has a strength inside her to face it. I don't know if it's necessary. And so, black companies. Do you know what a black company is? Okay. So, in Japan, black companies are a term used to refer to an exploited and abusive company. Uh, so, and in the game, there is this guy. So, he's a CEO of a famous uh, restaurant chain. And first, the main character <laughs> here about the guy because you know it's the news on social media that actually people uh, among these different veterans uh, are doing way much uh, over work than they should that um, some people are very depressed um, kind of try to understand why why is this character like that and basically the answer is he's only interested in making a lot of money and he doesn't care about other human beings so it's not actually a very good so, um, in real life, there is also this guy called Wakanabe Um He's also the CEO, the CEO of a very famous restaurant chain. And actually, the guy was convicted because some of his employees died uh, from overwork. In Japan, it's a phenomenon called Oroshi, um, which is dying from exhaustion from stress or not eating too much. And it's truly character characterized when you work more uh, than 140 hours per week. So, yes, it's okay. So, he was convicted uh, and went to prison, and it's really like a huge phenomena as we consider uh, that in 2016, that's 23 uh, percent of the major company in Japan have the possibility of having illegal work and way too much uh, of a work. So it's really something that happened and it's something also we need to understand because in Japan when you finish your study, you go to a company and usually you stay in the same company for the case. It's really uh, a crucial phenomenon to stay in the same company, to have the benefit from the county, to show that you're dedicated and have to be grateful for the company. So we have to work a lot. Um, we can be a huge uh, feminine of that. We can work a lot of suicide uh, from, from work. So it's even better. Well, employee working more than 50 or a week. Well, the champion of South Korea and Japan. It's really a huge issue. And we consider that also suicide in Japan. Uh, um, at work, uh, twice the number of suicides in the US, except um, approximately uh, 26 for one for one people. So it's a lot, twice in the US, and um, most of them are, are maybe two people. Yeah. So quick question, the uh, examples you're pointing out on these slides, did the makers of this game, have they explicitly said that the characters are modeled after these people, or these are just examples yeah. of the trends they're illustrating? No, and that's why it's interesting, because they never said it's basically how they are inspired to a real uh, character in the game. But they are way too much similarity, so you cannot see them. So that's why it's all too interesting. Yeah. So is there more of the American legalistic uh, disclaimer? Uh, inspired by true events, but names have been changed to protect the innocent, or <laughs> or to protect the guilty, or, or do they not even mention that names have been changed and they just say, this game is inspired by, by true events. Or do they not even say that? No, and that's why at the beginning of the game, as I mentioned, they say that it's not supposed to be inspired from real events. And actually, <laughs> uh, you have to accept in the game, and if you don't, you just go back to the menu. <laughs> uh, 
Legal protection? Do you know if they did like that to protect themselves legally? I think so. Yeah. I think so. It's logical to me. I don't work with them, so. <laughs> yeah, so. Any more questions? Um, since the game, uh, the game was mentioned also a lot of problems about corruption, politician, teachers, uh, mafia, institution, on YouTube. And thinking about talking about a lot of different problems, giving you a very dark uh, representation of Japanese society. But I don't see it, so it's <laughs> And so, to the first and a solution to all of this problem, as I mentioned, to make a change of Earth. Mm -hmm. Since we live in reality and we don't have a parallel alternative world when we are monster to protect us, it's a bit difficult to do a real change of hope like in the game. But actually, the message is to rebel and there is somebody harassing you, uh, making you uncomfortable. You cannot stay passive, you have to rebel, to speak, to express your true personality. To reason who you are behind the person. Uh, so it's important to express yourself, to talk, to make, uh, make your words heard, and make sure people understand what you're saying and why it's very important. And then, if people uh, don't want to listen to you, make them listen. And that's how they do the game using uh, the media, using social networks using uh, a lot of connections they have in the game to make sure people actually understand and listen to what they have to say so that society cannot stay and stays in a material condition that is evolving. So, in France, uh, we say that we should do games uh, in the heart from the whole user and as a heart it can be used to send a message and in the game so the message is really that you need to express yourself, to defend. But it's also been used in other video games, such as, uh, for example, Near Automata, or Square Enix. Are you guys familiar with the game? Some of you? Yeah. And so in Near Automata, it's also talking about um, artificial intelligence uh, in robots and how, how can robots have feeling, causing uh, offering a reflection about how is humanity ongoing with the with artificial intelligence and just to offer a reflection about it. So in a mission that's what you get to me. And there is also Rise on the Super Dome. It's also a very good game. Um, so in Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, so basically you live in like the prehistorical uh, world. That you know so what civilization was before, because there's uh, robots, uh, huge technology, but basically you and your friend have lost, have lost everything. So, and the game is offering um, also a reflection about how uh, it's becoming society with technology, um, what can happen after everything is destroyed, and it's like, well, mammoths and so, uh, video games can really use as a critic to send a powerful message, and that's why Persona 5 is doing with Japanese society. And I really hope that it will help uh, Japanese people and develop people from all over the world to understand what's happening to them and also to speak if they have a problem because they're not alone and it's normal to protect them. Yes. So I'm curious, you say your hope is that this game will help yep. people in this society to speak out, to express themselves. Are there news stories in Japan that credit this for certain actions, certain 
modes of public expression, something, some kind of impact that it's done? Oh, I would love to, actually. <laughs> no, uh, I think just offer a reflection, and as Japanese people are very reserved about that feeling, maybe there are an impact that people might get. I would, I would love to. I mean, personally, the game has an impact for me. Um, I know many people who played also the game that had a reflection from the most persona about to be a when there's a problem um, that it's actually okay to remove a mask, not well, to the body, but <laughs> to remove your, your mask and to reduce yourself. Right. Yes. Without that, isn't there like a, a high heels movement uh, for yes. the game's sexism? Uh, yes. Yes, so you've heard about the Me Too movement, I guess. Uh, and in Japan, there is actually right now um, another movement about high heels. So in Japanese, shoes are uh, futsu. Uh, so Japanese women decided to mix the Me Too and Futsu to create a two, saying that they are really fed up about wearing high heels uh, to work because they're, it's well, first. Uh, it's really pressure, um, I can't understand it anymore. So there's a, a movement saying we can actually wear whatever shoe we want at work. And it's really becoming a trend in Japan. And that's something very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, uh, is like so, like, is like the so, is like the video game for sort of social change thing common in Japan? Like in the US, the biggest games generally are like that, like in Minecraft and Fortnite. Uh, well, I think it really depends on the studio and what they want to do. If they want to do an, also on the target, uh, if they want to do a, a game for kids, obviously they're not going to take a talk about trade, etc. Maybe not. <laughs> but it's, for me, it really depends on the studio, on the target, and on the position. On the so Atlas actually they decided for a few decades to talk about a very dark subject. For example, in Persona 3, they are thinking about death and suicide in a very, very um, dark way. Uh, or in Persona 5, when the character decides to release his Persona, he pick his mask off in space. In Persona 3, he actually put a gun and pulls the trigger. So it's also a different message. Uh, in Persona 4, it's about uh, media, the impact of society. So for me, it really depends on the studio and what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't played Persona 5. Uh, my question is in two parts. Uh, the first one is what is the gameplay of Persona 5? Uh, oh, the second one is more about. Uh, the opinion question. Is it better to try to send a message through the story of the game or like the interaction like uh, of the gameplay? Or you create like Minecraft as a pretty light story. Uh, but the gameplay is about yeah you can create things, you can change things, you can produce some there's a long chain of things to go from really basic elements to really complex elements. Uh, so what are the personal five on what are the transmitting a message? Uh, okay. Uh, so your first question is with so the RPG game. So you have your main character and you go to the different dungeon, you have interaction, and you can buy weapons. You also have to take care of your different personnel by looking up. Um, <coughs> but if you were a bit familiar with the RPG, uh, so you have five with enemies. Uh, oh, 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 it's just interaction, like. Talking with people. No, you well, you can talk. Uh, you can go. You can basically live your life as a student. You can play video games. You can watch TV. You can uh, go to the bath. Uh, you you really look like a young student in Tokyo, and you decide how you interact because you don't have to actually with your other You can decide to spend time with your friends. It's actually quite different because. Um, the stronger the relationship you have with your friend, the stronger you're going to be uh, in battle. So, message is also for you. Uh, and, 
and then it's really the dungeon that you fight against most. Uh, also, about how we give you the page, uh, for me, about Minecraft, well, oh, yeah. in Minecraft, you're really free to basically whatever you want and then fight the monster at night. Uh, in Persona 5, it's more linear the way they decide to show you the different dungeons and the story. Uh, and that's how you really dig into the problem of Japanese society. So for me, it's two different. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but um, in Persona 5, even if you're free to explore the world, uh, you need to spend your time uh, the way you want. So the story is still linear, well, there are different endings, but the main story is still linear. Yes? yes. Um, how well do you think the, uh, the game targets the, the concepts of um, what the issues of sexism and harassment and um, all those kind of topics, if, um, and taking into account that the male protagonist is a uh, male, is it how, like, does it, yeah, how well does it do it? Uh, well, so it's very interesting, because in person that's really actually choose between a male and uh, a girl. And uh, what I'll just say to that, because your question is quite legit, um, the same things you can date uh, other, some character in the game, it was easier to have just like one gender, because it was easier for the development. I don't especially agree with that, but it's my personal opinion. Uh, so, uh, what was your departure question? The first part is like, how well does it address the, the, the issues that you know, brought up, Speci specifically regarding like harassment and uh, sexism? Yeah, it's a really tough uh, and different character. I uh, make you talk about what happened, what you felt about that. Um, seems to RPG, you have different answer. So if you choose the right one, sometimes like joke, empathy, uh, mostly empathy with a very dark subject. Uh, um, just like a mutual answer, uh, the character will tell you more about the story and can actually influence uh, uh, the connection of the character, how they're going to react uh, to the kind of situation. If you don't do anything, you just get stuck uh, in the problem, but you decide to spend time with them and all them, somehow you're going to be okay with me. Yes? So, um, back to the messages. Uh, I wonder that these actions that are suggested by the game, how much are those uh, relevant to the Japanese society? Like, are there any studies showing that if you take these type of actions, it will be better? Or how much of it is universal is also another, you know, the question maybe. Well, personally, I think that if you're talking to a team of sexual harassment, empathy is a very good solution. <laughs> <laughs> But um, no, there are no study in the game. It's a game, so that's how they interpret. Uh, but it's also part, I think, of the main story to make it realistic and to show empathy. There is, I don't think it would be such a good game if the character was actually uh, making jokes about uh, one of his friends, telling him something very dark about his path. So, and so the main character is actually a good person. He's trying to help because he also suffered from trauma and he's going to help his friend with their own trauma too. Well, for instance, the, the rebellion part, right? Yeah. It would be, it would be very culture specific. It would, it would work in some cultures, maybe not in the others. Maybe some cultures would actually be valuable if you rebel and stuff like that. But my question was, was, was really if, if there were any. I don't know, there are any indicators that for Japanese society rebellion works? Or any other actions that So there are needs, um, there are no formal studies showing that volume uh, Japanese society is going to work, but as we saw with the recent actuality, uh, not only in Japan, but actually everywhere, when you say to develop and speak about the problem in society, that's how you create changes. So there are certain things that's universal. Yes, for me it's more universal. Sexism, sexual harassment, um, workplace issue for me is universal. Yes, there are specificity in the game targeting the Japanese society and relating to a specific problem. But I also think that the game was such a success worldwide because it was also 
that's relevant for people in other countries. So uh, I'm part of the, the group of communes that does a lot of work on restorative justice mm -hmm. and sort of the truth and reconciliation model. And I find it very interesting because there's an element of this game that you have to change the heart of the perpetrator before there's any punishment or any, uh, any consideration of what the outcome will be, which I think is very interesting. I don't necessarily know if that's something you could say is, uh, is specifically isolated to Japanese society. Because I think the idea is becoming more and more universal. Um, I, I wonder what the implications are for that. And is there a link between uh, this type of game and the, the growing idea of either rehabilitative or restorative justice rather than punitive justice? The other questions I have are more like the fact that this game has so many different edges or stories to it, it's almost like the traditional Japanese story of Rashomon, where one way it happens, and there's like five different versions of it based on who you talk to and who you talk about. And uh, my, my last question about it is what do we think this game would react if Donald Trump was one of the perpetrators? <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you mind if we take them one by one? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so the first question about justice. Uh, so it's actually very interesting because in the game there is a question about justice, how uh, a bunch of students can actually uh, make their own justice. Uh, where it's not actually uh, police, uh, the dean of school, where they're doing nothing. And it's actually what they target. The students feel very frustrated because there is no one amongst the adult uh, who is able to help them. And so the main message about that is basically the whole society is corrupted. So that's really also. So what was your second question again? <laughs> uh, if you've ever seen the movie Rashomon by Akira Kurosawa, it's the same, it's a, a story of uh, a sexual assault. And uh, the story of the movie is constantly retellings of the same story from the different perspectives of all the people involved, including just observers. And there's a lot that's dependent on gender and class and position in society that uh, influences how you tell the story, what you think is right or wrong, what you think is justice. And it, it, it's, it, it lets you know, like, each story isn't a square, it's cube, it has many sides. And I'm wondering if that, if there's anything traditionally Japanese about this game, I wonder if that's it. I wonder if that's like the, the reaching back to that, that old story. Because the movie was based on a very old story before that. So I would, I would definitely question that there's no japanese in this game. The games come from a cultural milieu for a reason. Um, and I would use that as one example. And my last question was, what would, how would this game react if Trump was Just do the question to me first. Because I'm going to forget again, so. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, the game is using a very uh, traditional way of really into the universe. The, yeah, I mean, in the city. Uh, you can really feel like it's uh, new to like, current and traditional Japan by how the player uh, is going to the temple for Steve, um, how they feel about Valentine's Day, uh, also things you're doing at school, how is it with the teacher, the relationship, how the students are working, what they have to do about the class. So you really feel like you're going to a current Japan with both the paradox between traditional Japan and modern Japan, which is also white Japan experience. And your third question? What would, how would this game react if Donald Trump was one of the perpetrators? If Donald Trump was, was put in the position of, say, the rapist teacher or something like that? <laughs> so you want to end the talk? And then we're doing all things in this is a nice I was going to say, it might be a useful explanation to find one, but I just wonder how the game would, would react. Because in, in the case of that person, it's somebody infinitely more powerful who is actively helping to corrupt the whole society and who has so many views. Well, for this question, actually, you need to play the game because we talk about corrupted politicians and I don't want to talk. So, yeah, I'm going to let you play the game and get your own Because I think it's more interesting if you understand how it works with a politician and it's a cool society for the game. Yes? Uh, as a studio, there are many 
looking aside the game, like pedants or content uh, to try to accompany the reflection of people, or is it just play the game or let the game release? Like? So there is a game, uh, it's an anime, a manga, it's really cool to the game of the rest world, so you will touch not after like a Persona 5 score. Uh, but uh, I really suggest uh, if you don't have time to play the game, because that is actually a true role game. Um, you can watch the TV show because first uh, the video I showed uh, what is into the game was also um, used into the anime. Uh, but uh, then, and also Persona 5 is doing a new version of the game uh, in October in Japan of Persona 5 Royale um, in Europe, um, America, uh, next year. Is more but it's conceptualized only in Japanese society? Yes, uh, since mm -hmm. Japanese, uh, so since Japan was the first to actually name uh, the concept, uh, usually it's presented as Ikikomori. Okay. There is no other translation. Okay. And does this mean something like, or? Yeah, yeah. it's um, the idea of the person who is the back. Okay. So. Uh, back to the game. Don't you think it's very risky for a video game studio to tackle very divisive issues, to take a political stand? Because at the end of the day, the objective is to sell as many copies as possible. So, very popular video games like Fortnite, Call of Duty, don't really have a message. Well, Call of Duty does. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, like, so I'm not sure. Uh, it's actually, yeah. yeah. That's what it's yeah. Saying, yeah. It's I may actually have a question based on that. So your looking at strike this is a very violent game with the violence as sort of a purpose and so a message. And whereas if you look at like the top and most popular video games, there are things like Minecraft and things that are interesting, but so many of them are about hurting people and shooting Right? And I, I'm really curious, I've always been curious, like why are those are popular games? Why did those become the, the so first, uh, I think actually it's a good thing that video games are engaged, but it's really my personal opinion, because I think that video games are out and out of the and can be used to send a So for me, it's a very good thing. Uh, I wish more companies actually say to be more engaged into their video games, and sometimes it's very pity that they don't. Happen again, maybe they want to sell. So, uh, and then about uh, violence. Uh, for me, uh, I think, and um, for I guess also for people, doing can be a paralysis, uh, violence, uh, using, well, I'd rather have people being violent games than being violent in the game world. So again, it's my personal opinion. Um, I think it could be used as a paralysis, um, also to just feel, entertain. Um, I don't know if it's really a social media. So 
Yeah, I mean, you can think of many different ways to be yes. entertained and have catharsis, and yet so many of those things would evolve to be better around shooting people ahead. Yes. Very yeah. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So much you can't do it. When you get flat and hard, there's a boundary or a border or a space or a person. But what I think is also in the same between RPG is just not just about uh, how you battle, it's how you need to think about how you can battle. The strategic aspect is very important. And I think maybe that's why it's so many people like Japanese people, uh, Japanese uh, RPG, because, <laughs> yes, uh, because it's, uh, you have to think about how you're going to fight, uh, how you're going to interact with the party, and uh, that. Sure, you work on it's a good one, and some battles are actually pretty difficult. You have to spend quite a long amount of time to make sure you're going to make it. There's a feeling of satisfaction after. Okay. Yes, oh, sorry, after. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the series. It's, it's kind of like uh, multiple of these games sort of share some of this message? Or like, is, is the message consistent across the games with some variation? Or? Uh, well, Persona 3 was really into death and suicide and how to believe the Persona part of that, like So it's really the consistency about that. In Persona 4, it was more of a critique about the media and social network, of people react to uh, news in society. So the consistent research is really about Persona. Still using the theory of volumes, uh, of how people have a persona and mask they wear, and also show up. So, like, so the motifs and themes are kind of similar, but they talk about different things? Yes. Maybe so one last question, and then we'll see all the other questions uh, are after. I have a serious question and a very frivolous one. So, the serious one is like the series, um, at least our brain, my Play and what I've uh, read, they say that it's, I mean, that it's like a generational like conflict element. Like most of the first the series, except for like one, were all high school kids. And I was wondering if that affected, do you think that affected what kind of <laughs> issues they tackled and like, like not if it like because of all And the second one, very frivolous, I noticed you used the P5 font in all your presentation, and I was wondering you got that. <laughs> <laughs> It's too much. Oh, oh, I can send you both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find them online. Okay. Uh, it's really the font of the game. Right, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, where is the target high school student? Uh, I think first, uh, in Japan, the things that you can hear about is interesting is the transition of things. So, usually, that's why a teenager also has a rest because there's a transition. Being a little girl to be more a real woman. And so, and also because uh, in high school in Japan, you're really in the transition part. You are about to become an adult, to have a very important decision to your life, and you're still going to lose a lot of uh, So, I think that's also why they decide to try a high school student. And also, since it's really like in you know, a manga universe, a lot of manga, the uh, main character of a high schooler, they also do that. Okay, so if you have more questions, you are welcome to stay here as long as you want. And for attending, thank you very much.